sexes, Patty Berg ranks with the very greatest. On her way to the top, she faced and overcame the sand traps of hard luck like a true champion. Her courage and skill ended the myth that golf was a man's game. Patty proved that women could match strokes with men on fairway and green. At Minneapolis in 1918, the story begins. Patty Berg's first memories were of snow-filled streets and long winters. The youngster became an expert skater. She won the midget speed crown of Minnesota and placed third in the United States Championship. She was a natural athlete, a track star in high school. Then she tried her hand at golf taking lessons at the insistence of her parents. If Patty must be an athlete, they said, let her at least play a game that was refined and ladylike. So by one of those queer quirks of fate, Patty became a golfer. Soon Minneapolis had a new golf champion, Patty Berg. In 1935, Patty entered the National Women's Amateur Tournament. With only three years of experience, she had played sensationally, beat some of the best players in the land, and entered the final round. Glenna Collett Bear, greatest player of her time, defeated Patty for the championship, but the kid was a worthy opponent. Next year, Patty went to England, a member of the United States golf team. The freckle-faced youngster had been selected to represent her country in international competition. The English chose their finest golfers for the contest, but they were no match for 17-year-old Patty and her teammates. Patty was famous when she returned to Minneapolis. Her high school days were over, time for college. Entering the University of Minnesota, Patty went on playing golf, capturing tournament after tournament. Her burning ambition to become women's national amateur champion of the United States. Patty made her supreme bid for the crown in 1938. Estelle Lawson Page was the defending champion. She had beaten Patty with ease in the final round of last year's national tournament. This year in the final round, it was again Page versus Berg, and the champion was playing with machine-like precision. For Patty, it was a deadly test of skill and nerve. Would she repeat last year's failure? No, this time the story would have a happy ending. A new champion was being born. One more putt and victory. From a duffer to the national championship in six years, Patty Berg was on the road to greatness. Patty Berg. In 1938, she became queen of American golfers. Fame didn't turn her head. She remained modest and friendly, a typical American girl. Golf was the biggest thing in her life. She devoted herself to the game with single-minded intensity. Dressed almost always in old clothes, Patty defended her crown, running up a remarkable string of victories. Young Miss Berg was in a class by herself. She decided to turn professional. Patty signed a contract to travel around the country teaching the game she loved. Concentrating on women, she encouraged the fairer sex to invade the fairways. She developed into an inspiring teacher. But teaching, she found, was no substitute for the thrill of tournament play. So she embarked on the professional tournament circuit. In 1941, the Western Open. 
Mrs. Bert Weil and Patty Berg were the finalists. It was Patty's first important professional tournament. To reach the final round, she had beaten many top-ranking women professionals. One long putt and the trophy was hers. But she had only a short while to enjoy the triumph. After it came disaster. Patty's knee was shattered in the crash. Doctors feared she'd never play golf again. They were wrong. She regained use of her leg after a year of heartbreaking effort. By then, the country was in the Second World War. Patty did her bit, entertaining servicemen. Back to the professional tournament circuit. Dorothy Kirby was Patty Berg's rival for the championship in the Western Open of 1943. Miss Kirby was one of the outstanding stars of pro golf. Patty was still handicapped by the injured leg, but her strokes were straight and true. That year, she captured the Western Open for the second time. But Patty wouldn't go on playing professional golf while other girls were in uniform. She joined the United States Marine Corps. Off to boot camp, a lowly recruit. Up, two, three, four. The outstanding woman athlete of the year took her place in the line. To do so, she'd given up a large salary, plus thousands of dollars in prizes. But Patty Berg gladly made the sacrifice. Officer Candidate School. There, Patty studied the fine points of her new trade. She was a good officer, and a mature woman when the war ended. Exchanging her uniform for civilian clothes, Patty returned to professional golf. She was determined to regain her old supremacy. But after her long layoff, it wasn't easy. Months of practice brought back the old magic touch. And finally, she could make even the most difficult shots look simple. Then the first United States Open women's golf tournament. Stroking perfectly, Patty won all her matches. Once again, she was queen of American golfers, but not for long. Golfdom was invaded by a mighty challenger, Babe Didrikson Zaharias. She was one of the greatest athletes of all time. Her drives were longer than the average man's. Her muscular coordination was phenomenal. She had trained herself to play every club with almost incredible skill. In 1946, Babe Zaharias faced Patty Berg in the final round of the All-American Tournament. It was a battle of giants. Always at her best in hot competition, the Babe that day was invincible. Patty and the Babe met again two years later in the Western Open. By then, the Babe was pro golf's biggest money earner, the favorite to win. Patty played that match with a painfully injured hand. The crowd knew it and made her the underdog. But Patty wanted no sympathy. Stroke for stroke, she fought her opponent out of the bunkers and out of the greens, giving a magnificent demonstration of courage. If the babe faltered just once, she'd lose the match, and finally, it happened. Calmly, Miss Freckleface stroked the winning putt. Patty had turned the tables, conquered the almost unbeatable Babe Zaharia. Nineteen fifty-one. For Patty Berg, a new round in her struggle with Babe Zaharias for the women's golfing crown. On the last green, the babe missed a long putt that would have meant victory and a $5,000 prize. 
Patty sank the next spot to tie up the match. Only a playoff could decide that tug of war. It took place a few days later, a thrilling climax for one of golf's greatest rivalries. Patty took an early lead and held on to it grimly all the way. But the babe refused to give up and it was anyone's match right up to the final hole. For Patty, this was the supreme test. She needed only two putts to win. Riding on those strokes was the $5,000 prize and the women's championship. The pressure was huge, but Patty met the test gallantly. Babe Zaharias was beaten by one slim stroke. Generously, she paid homage to the victor. In that moment of triumph, Patty Berg recalled her past, the freckle-faced kid who became a champion. The steps on the fairway to fame.